and welcome to What a Horse. We are here today. Yes, sir. And you are early. Yeah. Try to be once in my lifetime. Well, you can get you ain't getting no brownie points for it. I'm going <laughs> to tell you that. You, you, you still got you, you Go ahead and do your job. We, we just get it on. We'll be right back after these messages. It's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And JD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Two-time world champion and world grand champion Joe Hall is now standing at stud during the 2023 breeding season at Precious Memory Farm for $750. Contact Daniel Miller, 931-703-5830 or Shane Porterfield, 615-809-4257. Joe Hall is now standing at stud at Precious Memory Farm. Oh, okay. We got a few announcements, and I got something to say about this uh, new rule that they're trying to come out with. North Carolina Championships this weekend, 5th through the 7th in Fletcher, North Carolina. Call Myra Helton, 704 718 4152. Judges Brent Greider, Newton Parks, and Amy Tremble. Then we're coming back the 9th through the 14th is the Rack and Horse Celebration. It's going to be held at Cooper Arena in Shelbyville, Tennessee. They got Jackie Byron, Ricky Parker, Greg Johnston, Steve Glidewell, and alternate Tommy Thompson as the judges. And you can con contact them at 256-353-7225. And then the following week is going to be... Well, the same weekend, really, is going to be the uh, uh, East Tennessee Fall Classic. Yeah. So now there's on, a lot going on. In North Carolina, I think um, Newton is not going to do it. Newton changed. I think, changed. Yeah, he got sick. I think he got COVID, and I think Johnny Puckett going to be the going to be the you one. You know, I heard that. Johnny Puckett going to be. I the, just didn't notice that. I didn't change it. I printed these out the other yeah. day. I've got a lot of calls about. Uh, We've agreed to give 25%, put it in a fund, a legal fund. I've had a lot of people call, text, 
and say, well, what can we do to help? So I'm going to tell you what you do. You want to help write a check, make it payable to yes, put down on the FAR or the itemization of the check, put legal action. Mail it to Water Horse, P.O. Box 1662, Tullahoma, Tennessee, to my attention. Now, I've already told Jerry and everybody else what I'm going to do with this money. I'm giving it to an attorney. And if it's going for the legal fund to fight what tr they're trying to do, then I'm all for it. The only reason I'm doing this is we was figuring up if I sold half the ads of all the shows that we got left, give it $100 an ad, that would only be $14,800. If I added half of what the Rack and Horse show is, that would only be 21. And it's going to take more than that to do it. But people need to realize that this is all horses. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what me and this uh, saddlebred guy was talking about. I'm not going to call his name until he tells me it's all right. But uh, a lot of them are worried because it says that this, the walking, the HPA, Although they use it to come after the walking horse, it's all breeds. It's like a domino effect. I know. When you hit the one, it's gonna, all of them going to fall down right behind it. Well, that's what he was saying. He was saying they was talking about the pads and, and the action device and all this. Well, it says exactly what it says. All action devices, pads, bands, weighted shoes. So what I'm wondering is a lot of these people that, especially our flat shot people, hey, when you, and if you look at, well, you and I was talking about the effect it would have. Yeah. Across the board. Well, that's you exactly right. I mean, it's not just the walking horse industry, it's several different industries, court horse people already see it. Mm-hmm. But when you start, you just think of everybody that'd be affected. Oh, everybody be affected. I mean, every, you know, when these horses, when you take these horses and you take them out of the show ring and you do, you know, everybody, what you going to do and turn them out in the field, the feed stores, the motels, the, I mean, the, the town that survive on this, on this industry, especially like Chevyville. Charities. You know, charities and all this stuff here, you know, that's, it affects everybody. Well, I, I talked to him. I said, I asked him, I said, why do you think they haven't gone after the saddle bridge? And he said, well, I, I, we wondered that. And I said, well, which industry do you think has the most money? And he said, well, saddlebreds. I said, exactly right. They've got a ton of money, and they spend it, and I don't blame them. And most of the walking horse industry is made up of people like me and you. Yeah. I mean, we, we, have, we have our people that are wealthy, yeah. and they love the horses, but the saddlebreds, they, they've got a ton of people with a ton of money, so they don't want to fight them. But once they get us, the presidency is set. That's right. Now, we don't have to argue with you. It's already done. Just obey. And you start taking their pads, their action device, their weighted shoes or whatever. I mean, you know, it is going to be. It, it's, going to, it's just going to dribble down. And get everybody, and then they're going. People are going to sit there, and they're going to say, "I never thought about that." Well, I know a lot of the saddlebreds watch what we do. Yeah. By the way, this guy told me to tell you hi. <laughs> <laughs> he said, said, "Said tell you, buddy, I like what he says." <laughs> but Jerry, it, 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 what are you going to do? You know. I don't know, Jerry. I no tell you order, because I mean, you're going to open a restaurant. I would, that's probably what I have to do is open a restaurant, do something like that, because that's all I ever done all my life is with these horses. You and know, cook and cook. That's right. You can tell by looking at me. I cooked. Hey, we, we, they got Jerry and and Ben and Jerry ice cream in there. Yeah, bit. they'll have Jerry and Jerry. Jerry we'll flap. We'll, we'll make some pancakes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> do something. I ain't make a living. Jalapeno cornbread. You do, and I make red beans and rice. I make some jalapeno cornbread. That's right, and, and I make the red beans and rice. That's right. You know, I, I, you're right, and I like that. <laughs> I never ate red beans and rice until I ate yours, but it would go good with a little cornbread. That's right. A little jalapeno cornbread. Well, i tell you what we're going to do. I, I, I can sit here all day and talk about the effect on the walking horse industry that this new rule would have, but I think a lot of people are realizing 
even the saddle bridge are saying, oh, wait a minute, that includes us. Mm -hmm. And they're right. It includes y'all, so don't think you're immune to it. But I tell you what, let's go to Alabama and watch some victory passes. That was a good show down there. Oh, man, they had a real good show. They had a good one. I, I must say, this lady's got a great string of horses. Oh yeah, I, I just hate that her, her the, the real good one passed. Now I hate that. But amateur 15, two and under, form a line. Hey, you ain't gonna beat that. No, that horse has a nice horse. Carol, she's a, a good rider. And like I said, time and time, I mean, she's been showing horses way back when. I mean, she didn't see a, dip, a big change in these horses since she been trained showing the horses. Oh, I know, I know. Dale, Dale does a great job oh, with Dale, her horses Dale now. Dale does he a does. good job. Right here is Mayor Bill and Dan Waddell for George and Kim Lewis. That was a stake horse that said, hey, I got another niche. So that's what, that was his stake horse. Oh yeah, he showed him the stake clay and then he pulled the shoes on, put that park former shoe on him, and he still stepped with that park former shoe. Hey, good horse. Real good horse. He gets it done. I'm surprised Kim doesn't show him some, to tell you the truth. And here, give me, give you cold chills and Becky might. And th she has made some outstanding shows oh, yeah. on that horse. And she finally, they gave her the recognition she deserved. I text Jerry during that class, and I told him, I said, if they don't tie her first, you need to have a heart to heart with them. So she did, now she made a great show yeah. on that horse. Biggie does a good job of riding. She does. <laughs> Right here, Cole Hahn and Allie Joe. You know, I've had a lot of comments on the, her size versus that horse. Yeah. Here's a country lineman and B.B. Beasley for Beth Beasley, your youth pony winner. That's another nice horse. Yeah, it is. Beth's got a good strength horse. Yes. And them girls are riding just about every one of them. Yeah, because I don't really see Beth show too much. You know, no. you don't see every once in a while, but she don't show. Well, they're even showing Zaro Jr. Yeah. And that was, that was one of the open horses. Those things go, you love to ride, ride. Oh, yeah, that's right. Here's, I am big enough in Maxine Beasley. That horse that won his share of blue ribbons. Hey, he, he is one of the best. Gets it done. I am big enough. He's won several blues. Yeah. Right here is Jimmer's Country Girl. I was talking to them during the celebration, and uh, Carol told me that Country Girl, every time her husband goes out there, that horse, all he wants to do is nuzzle up. <laughs> said, he kisses my husband all the time. Yeah. I asked her if she was jealous. She said no. <laughs> I do not believe that horse has been beat but once. Yeah. And I'm serious. I'm, I keep saying I'm going to look it up, and then I get busy, and I never do. But I think the 2022 World Grand Championship yeah. was mm -hmm. the only time. Yeah, it. Right there's a Super Bowl MVP in B.B. Beasley. We got some visitors in here today. Oh, Auburn's yeah. from 
Mississippi. Mm-hmm. You're right about that. They come all the way up here just to see this show, right? Yep, that's Don't right. Lie. They, they over come all the way up here. They come over here to see. <laughs> they got a good feeling over at the bowling there. Quite an honor, and Maxine Beasley. Tell you what, them girls can ride. Oh yeah, they can. Yeah, they can. They took right to it. And right here, that horse right there, I believe, is gonna wear the roses before it's all over. Oh yeah, he is. Good. That's a nice horse, real nice horse. Well, he does it so easy. I really like that horse now, I do. George and Kim now, they, they're good people too. Yep. Before I forget it, I also want to mention that uh, Jamie Lawrence's granddaughter had a boating accident. Yes. Two years old, I believe it is. I wish everybody would pray for her because this this little girl is, uh, she, she, she was in bad shape now. Yes. She, they say she's out of danger and everything. They were worried about the lake water. But uh, just keep her in your prayers, and let's. Uh, and uh, if anything else comes up, we'll post it on Facebook. Sadie Fowler, she, uh, Sadie Fowler Parsons, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. She came in the other day, and, and I told her to sit down. I wanted to interview her about her world championship at the celebration because it shocked her. Yes. But uh, I want everybody to listen to this interview right here. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with Miss Sadie Fowler Parsons, and we're going to talk about what it's like to uh, win a world championship. Who knew? <laughs> How long have you been thinking about it? Oh gosh, you know, I really um, I started, but well, I started in the walking horse business actually riding myself three years ago. So I think I was actually on this show and we were talking about me wanting to maybe get into it. And so I bought a horse that year at the celebration. Right. So I blame it on you. But I mean, so I'll, I'll take the blame. <laughs> I, I really um, would say that at the beginning of this season, I kind of like set my goals and my eyes on, you know, one day, like I really would like to actually do this, like win at the celebration. So my goal was kind of there, but I never in a million years thought I would actually win this year. There's no way. I, I, so. I, I was thinking that it would be you and the first horse you bought but that, um, that right was, uh, well there you go yeah that, major, so that's what my my goals were on my, yeah that that was, that on my was mind. a major tragedy but yes yeah then along come dim your lights <laughs> dim the lights yeah and uh it's it's uh i know but tell tell me when when you were in the ring and, and you were you were riding and of course you you go both ways and i what, what was going through your mind well First of all, Dim, you know, I bought her a year ago, and we kind of struggled a bit to find our stride, and, and, and you know, just, I feel like all of a sudden, uh, you know, mid-season this year, she kind of peaked, and uh, we had a couple of really good rides, but we messed up a little bit. Here, you know, we had, like, you know, a tiny little flaw, but it was right in front of the judge or whatever, so it's hard to gauge, like, how good she was, but I, I was getting a lot of positive feedback about her, and so... I think in some way, a couple of people had made the comment like, you know, you could win that novice class with her. You know, I mean, so I knew she was pretty good and we were getting better as a team. Um, but when I was riding in the class, I, I just like hold my breath and think, please do not mess up. Like don't, you know, she broke into a canner once in Pulaski, for example, and otherwise we would have probably, she was really good otherwise. But I was just scared, like holding my breath, thinking like, just get through the class. It was a big class too. So. Um, and, and we did, um, you know, there was a long time out also. So that I think helped her. We had, she had a chance to catch her breath. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just seems like it went on forever and ever. And, uh, but still I was not, I was just thinking if I can get like top three, that's gonna be like a huge victory for me. Well, you're sitting in the lineup. Uh-huh. And, and you're, 
It's got, it's got to be racing through your mind about was she felt good, how good was she? Yes, it, it, it always is on my mind, like, you know, you hope for the best. You, but I never, again, I just, like, never thought that we were going to win. And, and Kayla was coaching me uh, that night because Tyler had a class in the very next class, so he was in the warm-up ring. And so Jeanette was on the rail. She told me to tell you hi, by the way. <laughs> but Kayla was, like, really strict with me. She was, like... Like, I couldn't tell if we did good, like, bad she, or good. She, Taylor's good. Yeah, she is. She was like, I wanted you guys to be, you were so good. I just, like, wanted to, like, push you harder, you know. But I couldn't tell if we were, like, that good or not. That's the first time Kayla's ever coached me. So I just, I really, um, I, I didn't know what to expect. So we're in the lineup, and it, it, again, it took, like, forever, it seems like, for the cards to all be turned in. And I just, I was, uh you know, thinking, yeah, we had we had a decent ride. We got through it. I was happy about that. Mm -hmm. I was really happy. A little nervous. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> I was really nervous. I was so nervous. Um, you know, I just thought, God, she just gave it her all. I knew I was happy with that. I was, you know, really happy. But you, we've had a lot of solid good rides, and again, that doesn't mean that you win. No. You know, it never ever. means it. Never. Mm -hmm. It so, never means no. you win. No, I mean, I, you know, it's all new to me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then. Yeah, I try to be, like, pretty conservative. I don't, like, I'm kind of a private, pro like, I don't have a lot of emotions on my face all the time. Like, I don't show, like, a, a lot of how I'm feeling. I don't, I try not to. And so I, I couldn't help it, though. When they called, I remember when Mark called my number, I was like, what? Like, it took me a minute. I thought, no, like, this did not just happen. Am I dreaming? You know, like, I had to wake up. And then I remember, like, I couldn't even help it. Like, I couldn't hold my emotions in. That's what, that's what I'm thinking here. Making their first celebration blue ribbon round is going to be entry number 406, Young Delight and Baby Fowler Parsons. The owner and rider from Nashville, Baby Fowler Parsons and Young Delight. Riding out of the lineup and out of the Dallas division as our A division winner, owner and amateur novice Lady Riders of Harrison Young. I just couldn't stop, like, I cried a little bit. I was just overjoyed. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked, actually. Well, you, you can normally tell, <laughs> you know, when people, when they're in the lineup. Yeah. And they, they'll, some, of course, some people just know that they were real good and they're going to win. Uh -huh. We just know it. And then you have those that, bam, it smacks you in the <laughs> face that, hey, they just call my number. Yes. And it's, Is uh, that me? Hey. Yeah, that was you. me. Yeah, that's you. I was like, oh my gosh, and then I had to like, kick. I was like, come on, Dim, like, let's go, like, wake up, you know. I remember, I just thought, like, I, I, yeah, I was totally shocked. I was really shocked. I was really happy that my mom was, um, she was, I could hear her, I think, from a mile away, like screaming, cheering for me. Um, she came in from New York to watch, so I was really happy that she was there to see it. So it seems like a lot of times when I have a good ride, no one's there, you know, and, but. Um, I won't ever forget it. It was amazing. It was really um, a really incredible moment. And, you know, I just, going back, the fun part then becomes looking at the videos and watching everything mm -hmm. and, you know, seeing how I, I noticed really after the show, I was like, man, she really has gotten really good. She's filled out a lot. She's just a, a solid mayor, so. But you do know what that means, right? <laughs> no, what does that mean? You, you can never show in that class again. Oh, I know. Hey, you, you're done. I know. I, <laughs> I, I did. I'm like, what am I going to do now? I don't even know what's next. I can't compete with the other. I can't do it. It's, it's too many. There's too many great, amazing amateur riders out there. I don't know what's going to be next. Hey, hey we, we have a lot of fantastic amateur riders. Yes. But some of them have great horses. Some of them have not so great horses. Some of them are better riders than they have horses. Right. Some of the horses are better than the riders. So I've noticed true. that That's a lot. True. That's true. But when, when you can kind of mesh, and, and I mean, you, you've got some good trainers. Yeah. Now, there's no doubt about it. Between Kayla and Mama Kayla. Oh, my gosh, her, she's the best. She's and the best. Tyler, you, you've, got a, you've got a group that can, you know, guide you and That's help you. That's so true. It's such a great team. I just, I, I like, absolutely love their operation. I mean, I love how much they love it. Like, I think I'm as obsessed with all of this as them, but they're so like all in and it's, you can tell that they love what they do. And so, um, and I think that along with their desire to like get you in the right spot, you know, I always say the hardest part about 
running any business or, or having success with a team is always like finding the right seat on the bus for right. each person. And so that applies to horses and riders too. It's like finding the right division and, and where to put the horse and, and what rider is best with the horse or is it better to go with the trainer. So all those things like are factors and I'm like, I totally embrace their, their feedback and what they say and so far it's, it's working out pretty good. Yeah. Well, what's your plans for the next couple the next of months? Couple, yeah. yeah, we got a couple of more I months of show I, season. So I, uh, I just was talking to Jeanette on the way in here, and um, I said, so we're going to Asheville. With, um, so Dim will be in Asheville, and then Straight Republican, which obviously I'm really excited about him, too. He's, he's good. He's fun. He's real fun. I really like him. He's a sweet horse, too. He's very sweet. And then um, I have a couple of um, like more B-string horses uh, that I'm going to show in White Pine. Which I love having, like, kind of like the yeah. top tier in another because mm -hmm. I love to show. Mm -hmm. I'd show every day, you know. So, a lot of fun. Yeah, so we'll do that. And then we have one more show in Shelbyville. And, um, you know, I don't think we're doing Tunica. It's too far of a drive, but, I'll, you know, so I'll probably be there to watch. Well, I, I'll be at Tunica. I go for a three card poker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the way it goes. the money to pay for all of it, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I am looking forward to seeing you in the ring. Of course, we'll be covering the Shelbyville show. And I'm not sure whether CJ's going to Asheville or not, but I, I know the Balkans always go to oh, Asheville. Oh, yeah. So yeah, they're you'll excited. have a good show up there. Yeah, I'm excited. But I want to thank you for taking the time out to stop in and thank you for letting everybody me. know what it's like to win your first one. I, I know, you do, and you don't want to forget it either, no, right? You, so this is good. Well, we're, we're going to have memories of it. How's that? Oh, good. All Excellent. right. <laughs> thank you for thank coming. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, <laughs> bye. She, she was shocked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was tore all to pieces. Well, I guess if you will take us to commercial, we'll uh, come back and do some entertaining. That'll work. It's going to be entertaining, <laughs> too. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is the offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you, that's a, that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young, um, but now I tell you, got, all, got a lot of talent, that Hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies. Food can open endless possibilities for people to thrive. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished. Everyone deserves to live a full life. And with your help, together we can end hunger. Join the movement at feedingamerica.org slash act now. What's a Tennessee vacation? It starts off like any road trip. And then, boom, adventure and thrills everywhere you look, which happens to be some of the most beautiful scenery in the country. Music here, history there, and all kinds of green in between. Come relax and unwind, or bring the crowd for some stargazing, or stargazing. Whatever you do, come hungry and expect an awesome soundtrack. It's all right here in Tennessee. We're playing your song. For a free vacation guide, visit tnvacation.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I have a big passion for the Tennessee walking horse, but I also have another passion, and that's for communication systems and saving my customers money. We've done automobile dealerships, shoe stores, law offices, dentist offices, even the Breeders Association. I have installed systems from California to New York to Florida. And now for a limited time, I am giving three months free service to everybody that signs up for host my calls. And there will be no installation charge. Call me today, 931-581-4411 and see if I can save you money on your communication. All righty. Well, Jerry, we, we have talked in the past about 
our horse and the way it changes gates when you add weight and things. And we, we've shown this video before. You, I know you've seen it. Yes. But I want people to look at it again and then think about what this new rule is asking for. Because this, this is, every bit of this is natural that you're going to see. But what the government wants to do, and guided by the Humane Society, the Humane Society is the only one to come up with something like that. They want to take everything away. Yeah. They want to entirely ruin an entire industry because of that one group. Yeah. So let's watch this. This is called flat shot to performance, and it shows exactly what happens as you add weight and pads to the horse. This is the gate that we'd see this mare do if we were going to trail ride, go out in the woods, or go across the, mash, the pasture. This is what she does on her own. We see the bend of the knee and the front foot going forward just before it's placed down on the ground. Then we see this mare engaging her hind quarters with that stride up under herself, with that set to her hocks. We want to see that back foot push up under the horse and set down right up there next to that front foot. This mare does a great job at that. Even though this is still what we refer to as a lateral gait, a lateral gait, which means it's a more side-to-side -side gait, if we notice when Susan comes around, we want the legs on the same side to move at the same time. But what we do is through the timing on this mare, on getting her to a more vertical headset, combined with our shoeing, we want that two beat lateral gait, which is referred to as a pace, to turn it into a four beat gait, which the back foot on the same side hits the ground just one second before the front foot. That gives us the length of stride that we're looking for, and that, above all, gives us a smooth ride. Okay, any four-beat gait, which a beat is defined as when that hoof lands on the ground or strikes the ground, this mare the time that it takes for all four legs to move and to strike the ground, each foot sets separately, so it makes it four beats. Any four beat gait is going to be smooth. So we take a two beat lateral gait, which is the pace, we make it still a lateral gait, but we allow the horse to sit down with a four beat rhythm that makes it a smooth gait. If you notice, Susan sitting in the saddle is not bouncing around. Okay, Susan, if you will, park in for us. With a one inch turn back, as referred to in the light shot shoe as well, that's called the cock. Okay, with a one inch turn back. So we're gonna put the park pleasure shoe where the light shot shoe is and take that off. And we wanna watch this mare increase with the head shake, the movement up front and the stride behind. So while now, if you remember on Dust Bunny, we showed you the light shot horse at first. Now we're going to show you the Park Pleasure horse, and we want to see an in increase in animation, stride behind, and of course that all important head shape. Same horse. And what you're looking at is roughly about mm, an average of a pound and a half to two pounds of weight difference. If you notice the head shape, 
the bending of the knee, stepping off the ground from the forehand, and the front leg going forward, we call that reach. And then you really see this horse engage her hindquarters and use that crooked, so to speak, back leg to stride up under her. never want the gait to change. We always want the horse shaking its head, using the forehand, and engaging the hindquarters. It doesn't matter what division, the greater the animation that the horse possesses, then the increase in the division that the horse has put. She still has the same gait that she showed in, with the light shot shoe, or the same way of movement, but just with the weight, we show you an increase in the head shake, in the action up front, and then the stride behind. Now we're going to get ready to put a build up and an action device on this mare. We're going to take the Park Pleasure shoe off and go with a with the build up. The build up's going to raise her off the ground up front and give her a longer front leg by about three inches on the average. We're not going to change the angle of the hoof. We're going to maintain the natural angle of the hoof itself, which is about 40, I think it was, if I remember correctly, she's around a 47 degrees. Now we're going to increase the weight. The weight's going to go up. This shoe's going to weigh just under four pounds. So it's going to go about anywhere from three and a half to four pounds. Now we're going to show you a padded horse. We put the build up on her and we have an action device that weighs two ounces. So as our rider's preparing the saddle and getting ready to ride, Again, we're looking for an increase in the animation with the forehand, the bending of the knee and reaching. Then we want the horse to stride up under herself and engage those hind quarters even more than what we saw as a park pleasure. And we also want to see that increase in that head shake. And that's a two ounce action device. Slow down a little bit, Susan, slow down. Oh, well, it's been in trouble for a bit of <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, boy. Oh, well, that's never beat, was she? Yes, sir. Did she ever beat? Uh, only a couple times. That's the time that one right there is. Yes, sir. Same time. Keep going. Nice and easy flat walk. Come on up, Susan. Turn her loose a little bit. Come on up. Now, right there. Now, Susan, park in, if you will, and I'm going to replace that two-ounce chain with a six-ounce chain, and we're going to go up in our, in, our animation level. 
Now we have a six ounce chain on this mare. Good, Susan, right there. With the pads and the action devices on, that head set more vertical and upward. We really see the angle of the, of the placement of the neck and the shoulder working together right there to give us that placement. And really being the show horse that has become infamous with our padded horse or our performance horse that we see in the show ring. All right, if everybody noticed, that was just natural. Yeah. And her ears, if you noticed, her ears were forward. I, I just, I just believe if uh, people in Congress would look at that, they'd say this Horse Protection Act is outdated. Yeah, and it is. <clears throat> it's way outdated. But we got some more video to show, <clears throat> and uh, one of the things that I'm going to tell everybody is if the government was right about everything they want to do, then there would be no need for them to threaten or extort DQPs into turning horses down, which we're fixing to show you proof right here. These are the ones that are down there expect, inspecting. This was in Georgia. So please do. Heard that honors is there. They want him to turn down honors. And if they don't, there's going to be heck to pay, which we're going to see that in the in the rest of her text. That is pretty pretty obvious that if they are right, Jerry, there's no sense in them threatening heck to pay if yeah. you don't turn him down. I mean, it it just it just don't make sense. And another thing, and uh, you've seen this. We go to a horse show, and we had to fight for the right to video them while they were inspecting. Yes. Gibson made us go outside and then put security to where they'd be in front of us to where we could not see what they was videoing or what they were doing, how they were inspecting. We had to go outside and video through the door, and then they would come and stand in front of us. And to me, that's a dead giveaway. Because when uh, I took this proof to Nashville and asked them to pass a video law for Tennessee, it was unanimous. Even the Humane Society of Tennessee was pushing for it because they could see. They would have people sent out of the ring. If they caught them in there with a the camera, they'd have them run out. So if they if they wasn't hiding something, why why would they block it? You're right. Why would that. they fight it? But we did do one thing. We when once we got the video law passed, we videoed them, and the first time we videoed them, we caught them. Here's the video of that. My name's Dr. Stephen L. Mullins. I'm a 1980 graduate of Auburn University School of Veterinary Medicine. I've been in equine practice since 1980. I've been a member of the AAP since 1980, maybe even since 1978 uh, when I was still a student. I was a head of show from 2009 to 2012 at Show HIO. I was trained by the USDA uh, to, uh, to be a DQP and to train my other DQPs. Here we see a VMO inspecting a horse. She's checking the posterior part of the foot. You can see right here, she's using the end of her thumb. She's not using the meaty part of her thumb like the Horse Protection Act regulations say to use. You can see her right here, she'll use the end of her thumb and press down against the collateral cartilage and she's hitting the posterior branch of the palmar digital nerve. She's using the end of her thumb, which is not the proper technique to palpate a horse. It's a false positive. 
immediately after she inspected, they walked out of the warm-up area into this outside arena. I'm going to inspect this horse with the proper technique, and then I'm going to see if I can get this horse moving by hitting the same nerve. Here we're palpating his tendons. We're on the posterior part of the foot. I'm using the flat, fat part of my thumb. Here we are beating on his feet. You can't make him move, but if I grab that nerve, he's going to move every time. Here we're going to go to the right front foot. We're going to palpate him the correct way, using the flat part of our thumb. We're going to hit pretty hard. He's not going to react. There's the front part of the foot being palpated correctly with the flat part of your thumb. We'll go back and watch her do it again, where she gets her false positive. If you'll watch her when she pushes that nerve up against that collateral cartilage, that horse is going to react. Get in zoomed in closer. There she's hitting it again. That's a very vascular area with two different nerves in there. She's going to use the end of her thumb to get him moving. Has nothing to do with any improper soaring techniques. It's improper palpation techniques. She's getting a bunch of false positives by doing that. You can't do that without getting a response. All right, that right there shows what they do to cause it. And now they want new rules to totally destroy us. And out of all the videos we got, there is one that I like better than anything because it shows what the USDA really thinks of us. They think that we're just dumb country hicks that don't know anything. And uh, I think this video that we're fixing to show proves that they think they are so much smarter than we are that they can say anything they want to, and we're supposed to believe it. You know that. Oh, yeah. You're and, right. And you, and you know better. But listen to this video. When you can feel the roll of the top of it, that's, that's a scar, even if it's only two or three cells thick. I want to tell everybody something. Said it ain't pen. There's a thousand cells on the tip of that pen. But that VMO who is Dr. Johnson, he's a veterinarian. And he's telling us that he can feel a scar, can't see it, but he can feel it even though it's only two or three cells thick. Now the reason I'm showing all this is because all the saddlebred people that are watching us, you're next. I yeah. mean, y'all can dream all you want to, but they're supposed to be at a show 30 minutes before it starts. If you ask them for their credentials, they're supposed to show them to you immediately. But they don't do that. No. They show up when they get ready, and some of them will show you credentials and others won't. Uh, I think it's because the majority of them are not veterinarians. But I, we have reached a point in the Horse Protection Act that it, it's no longer the Horse Protection Act. The way that it was written was for a completely different horse. But I can tell everybody this, if they're successful in destroying the walking horse industry, the other equine industries, y'all just what was it you called it? Domino? Yeah, domino. That's what it is. Well, that's what it's going to be, a domino effect. I think some of it is, it all depends on what, how they feel that day and who they want to get that day, and that's what they're going to do. And a lot of it depends on which VMO shows up. That's right. And if uh, you, you'll notice on their website, you can go and you see where one VMO shows up. Inspections, their violations go up. If two of them show up together, Boy, you are in trouble. Uh, you experienced that. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got one that, I mean, she, she, I think she sets out her sights on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she wants to I check everything you've got. She, she, you she got. the radar on me if I come up there. She'll she, make sure. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's just beyond me how other industries do not jump in and help. Uh, if we all united, we, we could we could do good. We could demand them to go to court, demand them to look at what they're doing. And uh, I know in the past we, we've looked at uh, the 14th Amendment. We've always lost. But 
I don't see how they can turn their head on due process. Uh, it has to do with the judge you go in front of and a, a real judge, a legal judge that honors the Constitution. I believe we'd come out better. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, do your thing and then we'll finish up the show. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. The Mona Dean family is proud to announce that the multi-time world champion and world grand champion minor ordeal is now available for breeding at Sugar Creek Breeding Facility for the 2023 spring breeding season. Minor Ordeal has proven year after year that he is one of the elite champions of all time winning five World Grand Championships, one World Grand Championship, and the Reserve World Grand Championship as well. Minor Ordeal, a major win here in the two-year-old division, our World Grand Champion. Make the call to breed to a true champion, Minor Ordeal. 931-680-0897. Where does your donation to the Humane Society of the United States really go? Their CEO makes more than $450,000. Their top execs make more than $200,000 each. The Humane Society of the United States isn't even affiliated with any local humane societies and only gives about 1% of the money it raises to local pet shelters. So, if you want to help homeless pets, give to local shelters. Learn more at HumaneWatch.org. More of What a Horse coming up. All righty. Well, you want to watch some victory passes from last year's North Carolina show and yes, see sir. how many of them going to be there this year? Yep, that'll work. You want to do, you want to do some betting? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm wondering which ones I, the Ari 308 Dahlia Smith Hart, she was there. Yeah. They, Kenny and them normally goes to that show. Oh yeah. That's a big show, I tell you, that's a, hey, hey. a lot of people go to that show. That's a nice place, nice area over in that area. Well, it's a nice place to go, plus the fans. They're walking horse fans. Yes. They don't care if you're local. They don't care if there's their daddy in there. If your horse is good, they're going to cheer for him. If he's not good, they're going to cheer for another. The paddock master, Daddy Smith Hart. They sacrificed everything for the celebration, yeah. so I'm sure they'll be there. I say you probably see this horse here there. You probably will. I would think so. I would I would definitely think so. Because Robert, he lives up there close, so yeah. he'll probably want to show. Well, one twice. Yeah. One in open, then one in amateur. But there's quite an honor in John Allen Callaway for Beth Beasley. That horse showed this past weekend, so yeah. I don't much think we'll see it up there. Mr. Farrell. Now, Paul may yeah, be I'm there. I was say Paul's going to be there. Yeah. 
He's still floating from celebration. Oh, I yeah. bet you money. <laughs> yeah, I talked to him the other day. He said he was going to be up at the horse show. Right there, it's the medalist. You may see him up there. Yeah. I know they're going. They're leaving in the morning early. Well, the people watch this tomorrow. It will be this morning early. Yeah. Go back up there to defend his title. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's Cole Hahn. She was reserved up there. They will probably be there again. Getting late in the year, we've only got a oh, few yeah. shows. kind of meet up and beat up on oh, each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. Out there, MVP. He just won the Alabama Jubilee. I do want to remind everybody, if you want to help fight this new rule, and it, this is strictly my opinion, I just believe the only way that we'll ever win it is through the justice system. Oh, yes. Uh, the legal avenue. We've tried talking with uh, different senators, congressmen, representatives, the whole nine yards, and it's not happening. But if you, you want to help, make a check payable to yes, Legal actions, send it to Water Horse, P.O. Box 1662, Tullahoma, Tennessee, to my attention. I guarantee you every bit of it's going to go in the hands of an attorney. And then from there, we'll see what happens, because eventually we're going to have to file a lawsuit no matter yeah. what. If they pass this rule, it's just going to be an uphill battle if they pass the rule. And if they don't pass the rule, if we can get them go to court before then, we'll be that much better off. But I'd rather go to court before they pass it. And right now we're sitting on what? From today, 16 days? Yes. Uh, that's, that's two weeks that we're looking at that rule going into effect and then we will be rough. See everybody next week. See y'all later. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm gonna be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.